Oh. Have a seat, James. took what money we had for farm expenses and left. Ron is not any crawball. He's been seen in a bar with someone fitting Jim Henderson's description. Jim is not a suspect yet. He's a person of interest. And I wanted to talk with Ron. I was hoping uh, he'd be able to find me. Or help me find him. I'd go out and work these fields day after day. Yet my sorry brother don't lift one finger to help. He goes out drinking and spending his money on the women. I've stood behind my father 100%. Yet one half of this farm goes to my brother as well as me. It angers me to think about it. He scares me when he gets to drinking. I don't know what he'll do. I've been thinking about leaving just to get away from him. I'm scared of that man. You must stay on one. You know Mr. Brooks needs you. He depends on you. Not only is, is just a friend, but is someone to talk to. He needs someone to talk to. He needs a friend. And his other son? He's a port skis for a friend. Well, he won't bother you in this house. That's right. I've seen it with my own eyes. Before his mother died, he came in late one night. He was drinking. He was cursing his mother. Well, Mr. Brooks slapped him right down on the floor. He has a nasty right. <laughs> Ron won't bother you in this house. He knows better. Look, uh, could I talk with Mr. Brooks when he returns home? he was a little difficult to work with at times, like most kids. But then when he went to that city, when he left, I'm afraid that he sold his soul to the devil. Mr. Brooks, I'm cold case detective. Billy Davis and Williams. I've checked the bars and your son Ron has been seen with uh, someone fitting Jim Henderson's description. Now, Jim is a person of interest in this cold case file that I'm working on. And I was hoping that uh, your son Ron could help me find him. Ron will straighten out. <sighs> yeah, I can remember his mother, dear Ruth. What a great woman she was. She really raised them kids up. She really wanted them to be fine gentlemen. Yeah, she's not with us anymore. And I miss her. But, well, of course, Ron was always, he was, from time to time, we had our problems with him. 
But when he got to be a man, he went to that city. That poor boy. He sold. He sold to the devil. What it is, I don't feel that Ron Brooks is involved in this crime organization, but I just feel that he's in bad company. Somehow he's got involved with Jim Benson. And Jim, somehow, uh, I just feel the organization's out to put him down. Now, Ron Brooks, he's had family problems. I don't know. Mr. Brooks ain't run him off. But what it is, we've got to get to the bottom of this problem. We got to uh, drag this crime boss out. Because if we don't, if Ron Brooks decides to go back home, it's going to put his whole family in danger. Working the tightrope. I'll stay on. I know all uh, their sacrifices to be made. But working the tightrope. You know, it feels good to help people. And how did you feel about it? I just don't feel that what I'm saying, uh, these are gang uh, members, but not a motorcycle gang or whatever. I find these are businessmen working with the organization. They'll come in by flight, get off at the airport with a suit and tie, suitcase. They'll uh, get a motel and change into the street clothes and take care of their assignment. Then uh, you'll see them leaving with a suit, tie, carry their suitcase, uh, ready for the next flight, ready for the next assignment. I feel that's what we're up against and really we got to get to the bottom of this. We have got to get to the bottom of it. Well, Mr. Williams, uh, it's good to see you today. Uh, you seem to be enjoying yourself. Very enjoying myself very much. Uh, from what I understand, I heard about this fight you were in in the park there. And uh seem like Well I tell you uh, Looks like we got plenty of ducks out here today. I see it's uh, one, two, three, four here. I see so many over there. It's just wonderful to get out and see the, na the beautiful nature that God have created and the beautiful animals that I've created here. <laughs> Not just here, but the Earth, our planet. Yes, uh, it is beautiful. I enjoy getting out to myself and uh, thank you a lot. All beautifully created in seven days. Don't you feel that we all have to, as brothers and sisters, have one mind, one mind accord? 
to live through this this wonderful, magnificent world that God has created. United. Yes, uh, I work the time, right? And Mr. Williams, he's the representative. I report to him, he gives me all the information. And we uh, have time to fellowship. We enjoy just getting out by the lake, living in the beauty of nature, seeing the good side of life. We've had a great fellowship together. And Mr. Williams, he is a, a writer. And I feel that in this type of work, I feel you got to write a book, to have some interest, or possibly, or it'd just be hard to go on. We've got to deal with reality, but yet, Our job requires to us to research and deal with the cold side of life. But by dealing with these situations, uh, it can make life better for other people. And there's not a day that I haven't thought about just giving it up. Giving it up. We've had our days, you know, the fellowship, the walk on the lake, and, and I've had a chance to meet other people, and a lot of women. But, uh, I can't get up personal with them. Because if I do, what I'm saying is, the crime bosses, they can send me an item. He's putting them in danger. But I feel there's hope. I've talked with Mr. Williams, and if I decide to give it up, he can give me an identity, social security number, and possibly I don't even need a phone name, whatever. It'll be a safe place in which to live. Right now, I'm going to be walking the tightrope. Jim Benson, he, he drifts from my county to Sir Taylor's county, and uh, uh, he goes to all these banquets and parties and church socials, picnics, and uh, he just drifts around and, and makes himself present in all these places. And he's just that type of guy. Just shows up. You know, uh, I think I can gather more information by just uh, being around the people and listening to them talk. Like, uh, well, that's just I, I suspect somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, they tell me one story one day and one the next. Now, what would you suggest? How do I talk to people like that? Especially in the bar. Well, you need to get them off to the side and have them around a crowd of people, get them over to one side, just one on one, you and them, and a lot of times they'll tell more than they would, they'll open themselves up more than they would being around a, another a group of people. So you need to move them away and, and do a conversation with them off to the side.
How did you feel about it? What it is, these gang members, uh, they caught Jim Benson out. They beat him to death. Now, he died uh, two days later in the hospital. Now, what it is, a uh, description, a cycle gang, I don't believe that. I believe it's men from the organization. They uh, take a flight, come to the airport, get off at the airport, wearing a suit and tie, and carrying a suitcase. They get them a motel, change into the street clothes, carry out their assignment. And then they leave. You see them with a suit, tie, suitcase, ready for the next assignment. It can get dangerous. But I will continue to uh, get to the bottom of this. And really, uh, it's got to be done undercover. Kid, we just put our hands together and you know see what comes. See what comes up. Yeah. See if we can uh, kind of find out where he might have, you know, went or been. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, you try to find out what you can. If I don't meet you here, I'll meet you someplace else. All right. All right. Well, I'll see you next time. Uh, okay, sir.
they ought to put a ban on the AK-47 assault rifle. Well, I agree, uh, but from the reports I get, most of the people are killed with a small handgun at close range. The 22 pistol is the leader. I favor the single action army. Man, it takes his time, aims, fires. If he can shoot, chances are he'll kill you. Why do you say that? Well, you think about it. Most holdups, most armed robbers, handguns are used. And most of the time, they're not standing any further than you and I. Not all of them take good a shot. I just don't care to carry a gun. I want to bring him in alive. No, officer, what it is, every state spends thousands of dollars in tax money to rehabilitate the common criminal, to help educate them into being common citizens. Now, why not put this good money to use? What do you think about that, detective? The assault rifle is uh, something we don't need on the streets. But it still has a long way to go to catch up with the, the knives, the switchblades, the hatchets, the handguns. It's the man more than the weapon. I walked down by the river where the boaters found a body a day before. I made a career out of the military. Mm -hmm. And then after I retired, well, I met this lady and we got married. And, well, we had some happy years together. And then when she passed on, I just haven't been closely involved with anybody. But uh, I just tried to get away from it all, going to these clubs and socializing with them. Um, Women. Mm. No, they won't get close to yeah. you. And I know that uh, when we worked on this Will Simmons case, I met some women there that I'd kind of like to see again. Mm. And uh, I guess uh, the club's still open, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the band. and That was a good band, good group. Well, it hadn't been that long since uh, I was here last time, so I'm glad they got the same band.
call from this person telling me that he had information on this case and when I showed up where well, he tried to knock me off but it did not work. He might gradually just uh, you and him run in together somewhere. And when you do, uh, maybe you and him can kind of talk about where he's been and maybe uh, you and him, he can show you where he's went to, so we'll know next time when he takes off. I was afraid that it was going to come to this. I got a lead. I got in contact with Ron Brooks. Now, he's not involved in this organization in any way, but his friend Jim Benson was. And since Jim was killed, he's uh, afraid to go to law enforcement, and with good reason. But, uh, he gave me identification on some of these people, along with what they got at the hospital, and I think that I can intimidate these men. I think that I can draw them out. Now this officer that was killed, he was tied into the organization in some way. What it is, this man in the river, he was beaten to death, just like Jim Benson. Well, I say it, these men use guns when they have to. But if they can physically take somebody out, it just uh, cuts the evidence down in height. 
That officer was shot down because he carried a firearm. I think that I've got just enough information on these men that I can intimidate these men. I think that I can draw them out. I was afraid that this was going to happen, golly. Y'all say that you men haven't got your guns with you. Well, uh, you should have brought them. kick and you knocked him in the jaw so hard that you snapped his neck driving his body to the ground he was out of breath and out of commission and you kept on and you... yes uh, sergeant scott uh, that's what happened so i don't care to carry a gun i guess you'd rub me just shoot him down I just can't get any evidence that I did, man. Tell me what happened. What I know? I know that Jay Clannon taught uh, karate school. His other means of employment, he'd park his car three blocks down, and then he'd work the streets as a bum on the streets. He would intimidate people where they were afraid not to give him money. It's just what you say, oh, robbery, well, look at it. Well, the way I see it, uh, 
I feel that uh, they've got it coming to them yet. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, you got law enforcement uh, just in time to save me. It was my job to draw these men out in the open and send them off until the law got there. Thanks to you, they did. And how did you feel about it? What I think and how I feel about it? Well, two of these men talked and they got the crime boss in jail. So I just felt that Ron Brooks is in no more danger. He can go back home and unite with his family. So as long as I can help other people, I will continue to work the tightrope. But maybe next time it might not be this easy. I mean, what it is, I had a profile of a cold case investigator who I worked right with law enforcement. Next time, maybe I'll be called to work with the mob. I don't know. But I'll stay on. As long as I feel that I can do something to help somebody else. Son, Ron. That could be him. Excuse me, ladies. Let me see. Yeah, it's Ron. He's home. <laughs> yeah, my boy's here. Great. Oh boy, I gotta go greet him. My son is home. He's home finally. He's got no place here. My husband, Sammy, he's the one that's worked night and day to keep this place going. While it's no good, brother, he leaves with the money that we need for expenses to keep this farm going. I'm scared of that man. Who knows what he'll do when he gets to drinking? And what if he turns on Mr. Brooks? I don't know that he can keep him straight. Oh, there you are, Sam. <laughs> Got good news. Your brother's back home. Isn't that great? Tell you what, let's go to the house and see the boy. <laughs> 